Welcome to Patton by Frank DJ Schaffner. Again, third film I watched on this channel, directed by him. And yeah, uh, George C. Scott in his uh, best role, I guess. Um, he won an Oscar for Patton. And uh, yeah, I know him from a few other films like um, Dr. Strangelove or Let's Take a Quick Look. Oh yeah, Anatomy of a Murder. That, that was a great film. The Hustler, The Changeling, which is on my list, and Hardcore, which is also on my list, and this is um, not that far away. Oh yeah, and he played in the remake of 12 Angry Men. Right. Yeah, and now Patton. Which I know a little bit about the real Patton. Um, I don't... I mean, this film is three hours, so I... I uh, assume that this is very true to life, true to the life, to the actual event. And I only know that uh, Patton was a very controversial general. He was in Africa, if I'm not mistaken, st uh, stationed where he fought in uh, South Italy. And later in Britain, I think. But uh, yeah, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, I've read a little bit about him after I've watched and I'm a huge fan of Home Improvement. And if you also seen this, then you know that uh, Jill's father is a huge fan of Patton and he always uh, talking very highly of him, even quoting him. Like uh, dinner at 1800. <laughs> so yeah, this would be very interesting to see where all the references uh, come from oh yeah and it's written by francis ford coppola that's also very interesting a very early screenplay before he made the godfather yeah but only written by him so this is also very interesting uh yeah other than that i don't know what else to say other than let's rock my god i Actually pity those poor bastards we're going up against. By God, I do. We're not just going to shoot the bastards. We're going to cut out their living guts and use them to grease the treads of our tanks. We're going to murder those lousy Hun bastards by the bushel. We are advancing constantly and we're not interested in holding on to anything except the enemy. We're going to hold on to him by the nose and we're going to kick him in the ass. We're going to kick the hell out of him all the time. And we're going to go through him like crap through a goose. All right, now you sons of bitches. You know how I feel. <laughs> all right. Yeah, in interesting speech. It says a lot about the character already. George C. Scott. Wait, I know, I know, I know this music, music from somewhere. Oh yeah, and the music is by Jerry Goldsmith, I think. He also did the music to Papillon, also by Franklin J. Schaffner. Yeah, and I think I heard this uh, piece of music before. Tunisia. Ah, yeah, okay. So already in the middle of the war. American army to take a licking like that the first time it bat against the Germans. <laughs> Up against Rommel, what we need is the best tank man we've got. Rommel, the desert fox. Interesting. They don't look like soldiers. They don't act like soldiers. Why should they be expected to fight like soldiers? You're absolutely right. About 15 minutes, we're going to start turning these boys into fanatics, razors. They'll lose their fear of the Germans. Only hope to God they never lose their fear of me. <laughs> Interesting. So he has to somewhat uh, train the army first before going into battle. Any man with unshined shoes or soiled uniform is going to be skinned. <laughs> Seems like no one has discipline. So... They need some discipline and uh, motivation, I would say. And I promise you one thing, General. You will see no more German planes. Yeah. 
<laughs> and right after he said it. Right now, my God, that's enough. <laughs> now he draws his pistol. <laughs> that's enough. Now he showed him. <laughs> Rommel's out there somewhere waiting for me. Yes, sir. If I had my way, I'd send that genius son of a bitch an engraved invitation and I am big pentameter. Interesting. He he said that Rommel is a genius. And um he was indeed a great general. And I think later on he um took part in a plot to kill Hitler, but it failed. And then he had to kill himself. Er betet auf den Knien, kann aber wie ein Kutscher fluchen. Und sein Motto lautet immer angreifen, niemals eingraben. Hm. Ich werde ihn angreifen und schlagen. Bevor er dasselbe mit mir macht. <laughs> then he has to be quick. They are marching very close to an to um, another. They can use that for their advantage. I was also in the military years ago, and I learned not to do that, to spread more, to avoid uh, being hit by explosions. Because what one explosion and uh, dozens of people die at that one explosion. I like all the effects that look so great. And these are all practical effects. So very well done. But what I don't like, like shots like this from very far away. I don't like the depiction of sound. That uh, everything, that the sound is instant. That uh, kills the immersion a little bit. But everything else is very well done, very well shot. And that must have been so expensive to film. That one scene. <laughs> Ramo, you magnificent bastard, I read your book! <laughs> okay. That wasn't so smart to write the book just before the war. <laughs> and then use the same strategies. <laughs> Wenn Petten zu bestimmen hätte, so würde er in Syrakus auf Sizilien landen. Wie die alten Griechen. Steiger, wir leben im 20. Jahrhundert. Aber Sie müssen berücksichtigen, Herr General Oberst, dass Petten ein Mann des 16. Jahrhunderts ist. Ja, <laughs> yeah, because he read all that, um, that stuff about old wars. After he said he read Rommel's book, now the enemy is also uh, <laughs> knows him. That's interesting that you also um, see the other side. I have a plan for the invasion of Sicily. I want to make sure I get it approved. <laughs> That's exactly what they, what the Germans expecting. You know, George, you'd have made a great marshal for Napoleon if you lived in the 18th century. <laughs> but I did, Sir Harold. I did. Huh. Does he believe that he lived before in this time? George, I have bad news for you about your Sicily plan, I'm afraid. Ike has turned it down. Turned it down? Followed my plan, I'd be there by now. I'd cut off the retreat of every goddamn German and Italian on this island. All right, now you know what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to go to Palermo, then I'm still going to beat that limey son of a bitch, Messina. That's the last thing I ever do. Hmm. Sir, uh, Interesting. Sir Alexander's heard we're moving west. He says he'll stop immediately. Go no farther than Agrigento. That's what you think it says. I think it was garbled in transmission. Hmm. Ask them to retransmit the message and take your time about it. That'll take half a day at least. So he kind of goes against the orders and does his own thing. Hmm. Okay. That must have been so dangerous to film. Palermo's the most conquered city in history. First, the Phoenicians. The 
Romans, Carthaginians, Byzantines, then came the Arabs, Spaniards, Neapolitans. Now comes the American army. I think this this is why he he's such a great commander because that's his yeah his uh, life, <laughs> not only hobby, but uh, he reads a lot, very knowledgeable, not not just <laughs> not <your level. laughs> I don't know. You have a yellow bastard sitting here crying in front of these brave men who've been wounded in battle. <laughs> Shut up! Man. Don't admit this yellow bastard. Nothing wrong with him. He won't have sons of bitches who are afraid to fight stinking up this place of honor. You're going back to the front, my friend. You may get shot, and you may get killed, but you're going up to the fighting. Either that or I'm going to stand you up in front of a firing squad. I'm going to shoot you myself, you goddamn weapon bastard. Get him out of here! Back. Send him up to the front! You hear me? You goddamn coward! Man, that was some serious PTSD, and he mistakes us for, for cowardice. Reminds me a little of uh, Path of Glory, the shell shock scene. Very similar, but yeah, by by this time they didn't even know that it was a serious uh, mental health issue. They got me holding a little GI there and kicking him with an iron boot. You see that? What's on my boot? A swastika. What news? By General Bradley, sir. How they gave him the top American command for the invasion. Oh. Oh, yeah. Interesting. He doesn't like it at all. Of course. Well, an easy little slap. That's what done. I wish I'd kissed the son of a bitch. <laughs> sure. Hmm. Intermission. Interesting. <laughs> Haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, all right, all right. For now, yes. Very great acting, like expected. Very well done production overall. The camera work, as usual, for a Franklin J. Schaffner film. The music is very good, man. I really like the music. Very subtle and yeah. Well composed. And I heard that before, but I can't put where. Maybe in a lot of things. A lot of different things. This piece. I like this piece. Still. That ambiguous sound with the with the delay effect. <laughs> yeah, so so now he lost the command. But what now? I think. He goes to uh, England and yeah, advances into France or something. Yeah, and the character itself, like expected, very controversial. But uh, yeah, from the from a military standpoint, he's a very great commander. But uh, his views are sometimes sometimes very questionable. Eisenhower has ordered me to Malta, but that's off the record. Interview concluded. Oh, okay. You plan on slapping any soldiers there, General? <laughs> it's interesting camera. Up in London, they're planning the invasion of Europe. That's what I've trained my whole mind, body, and spirit for. What in God's name am I doing here? All right. Let's get on to Cairo. See if the pyramids are still standing. Okay, so now his job is to go into Greece. Grund, warum er in Kairo ist, um mit den griechischen und jugoslawischen Exilregierungen zu verhandeln. Verdammt noch mal, sollen die Italiener Italien verteidigen. Es ist ja schließlich ihr Land. Wir brauchen unsere Truppen auf Kreta und an der griechischen Küste, um unsere Einheiten dort zu verstärken, falls Petten von Ägypten aus losschlägt. Okay. London. Okay, now he is in London. I think he was on his way to Egypt. What the fuck? <laughs> We're going to 
could build an army of 12 divisions around you. All fictitious, of course. Dummy fictitious. troop concentrations, dummy landing craft, simulated radio <laughs> traffic. You see, the Germans are convinced that you are going to lead the main invasion effort. Their agents will spot you here before long, then we can move you to your new headquarters at Nutsfund. What do I do there? Interesting. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Frankly, George, you're on probation. If you take my advice, you'll behave yourself. Remember, your worst enemy is your own big mouth. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So they gave the Germans false information. General, he'll kill that dog. Now, nah, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, General. Did Abigail frighten your dog? <laughs> oh, but, uh... Intelligence confirms that I'm against Wommel again. Again? The only way I can get out of the doghouse is to do something spectacular. I've got to get back in the war. My God, Hitler's own people tried to kill him a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago? Huh. But Rommel is still in command. Going against Montgomery again. How could that be? Because he was involved in it. I think George would at least have the courtesy to let us know where he's going. <laughs> where are you going, General? Berlin! I'm gonna personally shoot that paper hanging son of a bitch! Yeah. That's a long way. But I have a guess that the Russians are quicker than him. <laughs> That's just across France. So he progresses at a use at a huge speed. And this seems to be very effective. That's also what the Germans did in Poland, France and Denmark. Also known as Blitzkrieg. And that's so effective because the enemy can't keep up with that speed to get in position for defense. Out of gas. <laughs> My tank platoon was supporting an infantry company. The tanks ran out of gas. So we had to fight it out. Ike wants to know if anybody can get up there and relieve the 101st before they're torn to pieces. I can attack with three divisions in 48 hours. Ike wants a realistic estimate, George. You're in the middle of a fight now, and it's it's over 100 miles to Bastogne. My staff's already working out the details. Hmm. And I think I can speak for Field Marshal Montgomery. He'd say you're asking the impossible of your men. Of course he would. Because he's never realized that that's what we're in business for. <laughs> okay. He's always the one, one step ahead of everybody. It seems like. This is where it pays off. The training and the discipline. Go into a major attack with no rest, no sleep, no hot food. God. God, I'm proud of these men. <laughs> yeah. That's respectable. Putting that off. Hmm. Interesting. Now he accomplished everything he wanted, but now it's over. And everything he lives for <laughs> came to an end. And it seems like he doesn't get the credit for it, but the Russians did <laughs> to his uh, very dislike. Please inform him that I do not care to drink with him or any other Russian son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks that you are a son of a bitch too. <laughs> now he showed him. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> Ike is furious. How could you possibly compare the Republicans and Democrats to the Nazi party? And this statement that you refuse to denazify has everybody screaming, the Russians, the British, everybody. <laughs> he opened his, his mouth again. I'll tell you something, Beetle. Up until now, we've been fighting the wrong people. 
In 10 days, I'll have us a war with those sons of bitches, and I'll make it look like their fault. George, you're mad. You're absolutely out of your mind. Well, I'm no diplomat. I'm a combat soldier. That's all these jokers understand. You get Ike to give me the word, and I'll kick the behinds back into Russia where they belong. <laughs> I think he, he just can't accept that the war's over. You can really see how hard is this is for him. Also, that that, that great acting. For over a thousand years, Roman conquerors returning from the wars enjoyed the honor of a triumph, a tumultuous parade. A slave stood behind the conqueror, holding a golden crown and whispering in his ear a warning that all glory is fleeting. That's it. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very interesting film about a very interesting character. All right, okay. I have to think about it. And then I'll be back with the review. All right, that was it. That was bad. Three hours, very long, but time flew by and it was very well told, this film. I was engaged in the story. Um, yeah, although I know I knew a little bit about Patton, it was very interesting to see all the details he went through and all the decisions that were made. And all that. I also like that we uh, saw both perspectives from the American side and the German side. Yeah, it was very well directed, very well shot, a lot of static shots, well composed. Uh, yeah, shots. <laughs> um, and the battle scenes, man, that was impressive because all the stunt work. I can imagine that it was not only difficult to make, but also dangerous to make because of all the practical effects, the, all, all the explosions, which were very well done. So um, that was on top. Yeah, and um, what I already said, I didn't like the sound, <laughs> the depiction of the sound that killed the emergent a bit. But like I said, I liked how it was shot and I appreciate the uh, the effort it took and all that. Yeah, written by Francis Cord Coppola. That was very interesting and he did a really great job, man. I mean, not just the dialogue and, and everything, but um, how the story was told. That was very well portrayed. So, yeah for one of his first scripts ever. That was uh, impressive. Let's say that. Yeah, George C. Scott <laughs> deserved Oscar. Man, he was so in his role. I totally believed this was actual uh, pattern. And yeah, that acting was top notch. Yeah, and seven Oscars. The film won seven Oscars, so let's take a look. Winner, best picture. Winner, best act in a leading role. Refused to accept the nomination and the award because he did not feel himself to be in, an, in any competition. Frank McCarthy, the film's producer, accepted the award on Scott's behalf at the ceremony, but, it, but returned it to the Academy the next day in keeping with Scott's wishes. Oh, interesting. But it was well deserved, <laughs> in my opinion. The other actors were Jack Nicholson for Five Easy Pieces, which I watched on the channel. Interesting. The Great White Hope, James Earl Jones, Melvin Douglas, I Never Sang for My Father, Ryan O'Neill, Love Story. Yeah, interesting. Winner, Best Director. Winner, Best Writing. So this was the first Academy Award nomination and win for Francis Ford Coppola. Just two years after that, 
He won Best Writing for The Godfather. He was nominated for Best Director for The Godfather. Huh. Alright. Best Cinematography hasn't won. Also, Best Effects didn't win. Best Music didn't win. Best Music didn't win? What? <laughs> Wait, what's, what was the competition? Love Story won. Ah, okay. Interesting. Yeah, but the music was so great. Especially that one one tone is slowly fading out with that delay effect. Man, I love that. And I heard that before. But uh, yeah, let me know if uh, any other film or something um, used this also or was inspired by it. That would interest me. Yeah, best film editing, best sound, best art direction, set direction, which is no um, production design. Yeah, and that's it. So out of 10 nominations, won seven. Yeah, but even though it was uh, three hours, it uh, felt like a little pieces are missing because in one scene he uh, said when he uh, marched through France, he talked about his well-trained men and we didn't see him training them actually <laughs> but he had a, ha had enough time right he had uh, no nothing to do for a while so he trained the men i assume in that time before he uh, took them into battle i guess it wasn't important enough to uh, put the plot forward but uh, yeah that would be interesting to see <laughs> how he trained them yeah and like i said um he was such a great leader, such a great commander. He was so nudged, nudged, <laughs> again, nudged, nudged. No <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? Nudgeable, 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 nudgeable. Sounds wrong. Nudgeable. He knew a lot. So, and uh, yeah, he read a lot about the ancient. Um, Warfares of uh, the Romans and Napoleon, and he used that knowledge to get an advantage in war to a degree that he was very feared uh, amongst his enemies. They really feared him, right? <laughs> they were so afraid what his next move could be. He did nothing. But, uh, yeah, the Germans were very scared about his next move. It was also very smart to, um, to give them false information. So they can't react to an actual attack that quickly then. And at which speed he attacked. The Germans couldn't keep up. Very impressive. So in the end, he defeated them with their own methods, you could say. Yeah, great uh, commander, but... Um, as a human, there's, uh, there were some faults. His views, very controversial. And <laughs> every time he opened his mouth in his speeches, <laughs> some scandal were in the paper <laughs> about him. But like he said, he was not a politician. He was a general. And the ending was also very interesting because it was very hard to him to let go and that great acting underlined it you could really see his struggle his inner struggle with it <laughs> he accomplished his goals but now that there aren't any goals anymore yeah it's like his own he signed his, his own ending <laughs> i don't know how to how to say but uh yeah he can't do what he's best at anymore oh yeah and also um from what i remember every scene was shot on location i think i think the the whole film was shot on location right that's also impressive oh yeah and the makeup work was also very convincing especially in the beginning and yeah when we saw the dead people 
with their limbs gone and all the, the wounds they had very convincing but makeup was it nominated ah makeup was not nominated interesting but uh, also very well done yeah <laughs> and it seems like that this film was very accurate to the real events but how accurate that's the question let's see some trivia george c scott initially refused to film the famous speech in front of the american flag when he learned it would be at the beginning of the film he felt that the rest of his performance would not live up to that scene director franklin franklin j schaffner lied to scott and told him that the scene would be put at the end of the film <laughs> okay interesting but it was a good choice to uh, put that in uh, at the beginning it was uh, telling a lot about the character nearly half the budget was spent on soldiers and equipment rented from the Spanish army. Interesting, half the budget. Francis Ford Coppola says in the DVD commentary that he wrote a draft screenplay in 1966 and was fired from the film in large part because Fox objected to opening the, the movie with Patton's speech. When the film finally went into production, Coppola's draft was dusted off and most of it used in the final film. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, all right. That's it, I would say. Great film. And I would say, see you next time. Bye bye.